Hi, my name's Tom, and I know that when you're studying for your ATPL exams, sometimes the last thing that you want to do is go and spend half an hour or an hour uh, watching some guy on the internet try and explain something to you. So I'm going to start a new series called Five Minute Fixes, where I'm going to try and uh, distill a particular item into a a single five minute video that you can watch while you're having a cup of coffee, taking a little break before you go back to hitting the question banks and getting on with your own studying. I've got no idea how well this is going to work, um, but I'm going to give it a go. Today, this first attempt at a five minute fix, uh, I'm going to look at the subject of trigonometry. Now, uh, some of you won't have been best friends with maths when you were at school and this video is for you. Uh, I want to try and do a very basic introduction to what trigonometry is. Now it comes up in aviation all the time. Rates of descent, rates of climb, rates of turn, uh, distances, speeds, uh, distances off track. There are so many reasons why trigonometry needs to be your friend when it comes to studying your ATPL exams. So this will attempt, and I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try to do an introduction to trigonometry in five minutes. <sighs> Wish me luck. Hold on tight. Here we go. Okay, let's put five minutes on a clock down here somewhere and let's go. Trigonometry is all about right angle triangles and three functions, and they are sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, a right angle triangle is one in which one of the angles is a right angle. So let's have a look at this right angle triangle, and I'm gonna pick on this angle just here, and I've labeled it theta because that's the label that we often give to angles that we're interested in. And once we've picked the angle that we wanna find something out about, we need to label the sides. The longest side is always known as the hypotenuse. Depending on which angle you choose within the triangle, one of the sides is labeled the opposite and one of the sides is labeled the adjacent side. Now the opposite side is opposite the angle and the adjacent side is the one that's adjacent to the angle that we're interested in. Now there are three basic functions in trigonometry, sine, cosine and tangent. If we go back to our triangle, then uh, we can have a look at how that works. So the sine function tells us that the sine of our angle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. On our triangle, the angle that we're interested in is 30 degrees. If you, on your scientific calculator, type in sine 30, you'll come out with 0.5. Now, if you look at the triangle that we've got, 5 divided by 10 is 0.5. So we can see that this is true. The second function is cosine. Cosine says that the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the cosine of our angle. 8.7 divided by 10, 0.87. If you do cos 30 on your calculator, you'll get 0.87. The third function is tangent and the tan of our angle is equal to the length of the opposite divided by the length of the adjacent. So in this case, five divided by 8.7 is 0 0.57, and if you do the tan of 30, you'll get 0 0.57. Now there's a relatively simple mnemonic that uh, explains this, and that is SOKOTOA. Basically, you need to know this in order to answer any trig question that you come across. Now, SOKOTOA works great if you already know the angle that you're dealing with, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you'll only know the length of the sides. On this triangle, we're still interested in the same angle, and I've labeled a couple of the sides. We can see we've got the length of the opposite side and we've got the hypotenuse. So from SOKOTOA, we can see we want to use the sine function, and the formula would look like this. So do that on a calculator, and you'll come out with something like 0.24 but this doesn't give us the size of the angle, instead it only gives us the sine of the angle. And so to get out of this pickle, we need something called inverse functions. From the formulas on the screen, uh, you can see that if we don't know the angle, we can do the inverse sine 
of the opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case we've worked out to be 0.24. So doing the inverse sine of 0.24 gives you about 14 degrees. So let's look at a real world example. Let's say you're about to depart an airport, but three nautical miles away from the end of the runway, there's a radio mast that's a thousand feet tall. And by the time you get to the radio mast, you've got to be 500 feet above it. So you wanna know what the minimum flight path angle is that you need to achieve in order to guarantee your obstacle clearance. Unsurprisingly, we can look at this as a triangle, but you'll notice that we've got nautical miles on the bottom and we've got feet on the side of the triangle. Now, very, very roughly speaking, we can say that one nautical mile is equivalent to 6,000 feet. So we can take our three nautical miles, multiply it by 6,000 feet per nautical mile, and we end up with 18,000 feet along the bottom of our triangle. And we can see that we're looking at the side opposite and the side adjacent to the angle that we're interested in. So from Sokotoa, we can see we're dealing with the tangent function. So our formula would look like this, which is the same as 1,500 divided by 18,000. And if you do that on a calculator now, you'll come out with a number like 0.08333 recurring. But just like our last example, we're not finished yet. So in order to find what the actual angle is, we've got to do the inverse tan to 0.08333. Plug that into your calculator and you'll get something like 4.8 degrees. And I'm rounding that up to say five degrees for the sake of ease. And now that you know that, you can go back to your aircraft's performance data to work out whether or not you'll actually be able to get the 500 foot required obstacle clearance. And that's it. That is trigonometry. So to summarize, there are three main trig functions and they are sine, cosine, and tangent and they each have an inverse. So if you know the angle, you can use the function, and if you don't know the angle, you can use the inverse. And these can easily be remembered by using the mnemonic SOKOTOA. And that's it. That's a really quick blast through the world of trigonometry to try and help you get your head around it just a little bit better than maybe um, you have before. I really hope that helps. Uh, leave me some comments below to let me know whether this was a good idea or a bad idea and also let me know some feedback of other subjects that you think might be useful. I'm thinking about doing one of these for the departure formula, for conversion angles. I think I could do one for basically everything within mass and balance could be explained with a five minute tip. Um, looking at the one in 60 rule and a few other things as well. But if you've got something in particular that you're thinking about then drop me a comment uh, and let me know and I'll have a look at it. If you found this helpful, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't already. Otherwise, good luck. My name's Tom and I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips. <laughs>